We're in a simulation. The Big Bang was pressing the on button. Atoms are bits. The multiverse hypothesis is accurate and other universes are simulations running in parallel on the same hardware. Some of us are NPCs and others are ported in from outside the simulation. I was listening to Joe Rogan's podcast with an interesting individual named Rizwan Verk. Rizwan discusses the simulation hypothesis in quite a convincing manner. Riz is a graduate of MIT and Stanford, a video game engineer, venture capitalist, and professor at Arizona State University. He even teaches a class on the simulation hypothesis, which posits that we are living in a simulated reality, much like in a science fiction movie similar to The Matrix. The way he speaks about simulation theory is quite compelling because it's similar to how I've enjoyed thinking about it and have been circling around this idea for some time. From my perspective though, this has been more speculative and a fun exploration. Riz makes an argument for it with a level of conviction not mostly used in thinking about simulation theory. At this moment, it's not possible to say whether it's true. And of course, I have no idea if it is. It's fun to think it is. And some formidable technology thinkers, Elon Musk namely, thinks it's not only possible, but seems probabilistically likely. I think it's a nice model of the world that helps us make sense of everything from quantum physics to religion. But it's also heavily speculative and in a sense, a new religion in and of itself. The topic of simulation theory is multidimensional and covers many areas that I have been deeply curious about and interested in, such as technology, science fiction, religion, philosophy, and gaming even. Quantum physics has been an unexpected rabbit hole in the idea of simulation theory, but it plays an important role. In fact, it's quite interesting that simulation theory itself tethers itself to the material world as a possible fact by looking into quantum physics. Once I found out about the observer effect, it solidified a perspective that intuitively felt right, but seemed insane to say 10 years ago. Our perceptions are just as important, if not more so, than the actual physical and material world. The observer effect grapples with this idea that measurement alters the state of what is measured in some manner. There's the most prominent experiment of this which is Schrodinger's cat, in which there is a thought experiment that goes as follows. A hypothetical cat can be considered simultaneously both alive and dead, while it is unobserved in a closed box. As a result of its fate being linked to a random subatomic event that may or may not occur. There have been related philosophical issues that have existed for a long time. The idea that the world is perceived through a manifestation of our senses. This means we can only ever know the world through our senses. This idea can be traced as far back as Plato's allegory of the cave and a prominent argument of Immanuel Kant's proposition that we can never know the thing in itself because our understanding of the world is mediated completely by our sensory experiences and cognitive faculties. This is central to his critique of pure reason. This philosophical idea applies to simulation theory because it raises the notion that in the same way we can't see atoms, we perceive them through our senses, which could just be rendered experiences of the collection of atoms. In other words, the world around us could be computer generated and our senses make it recognizable in a way that we want to recognize it. The observer effect supports the idea because even quantum physics now demonstrates that a particle's properties have different values prior to being measured. Upon measurement, values of those properties exist. I'm no quantum physicist, but these ideas in combination raise questions about the nature of the universe and highlight key philosophical points. Measurement affects the state of the thing at the quantum level. So to what extent does the observer shape the physical phenomena? It's possible that the observer's perceptions affect the state of physical phenomena in full. Are objects in a specific state because we all have a shared dream of the world that renders it that way? We can look at this psychologically too. Humans are action predicated, predicated creatures. Setting goals is important partly because it mediates what we see in the world. We see the world as obstacles and pathways to that given goal. An obstacle to the goal raises a threat and evokes anxiety while pathways are dopaminergic triggers. I've experienced this when my wife and I were in the market for a new car last year. 
it seemed that we started to see Kia Sportages everywhere we went because it was in the running for selection. And observing other Sportages on the road had become a pathway to achieving the goal. Once we made our final selection, I've not noticed a single Sportage on the road since, nor have I cared about it. There's also certainly a computational argument here. The basic computer language bits are manipulated so that the computer can generate whatever the programmer wants you to see. That means the bits are perceived in the way the creator wants them to be perceived. The perception is based on the bit bender or software engineer. So how can we know that atoms are not bits? Has someone from outside bent the atoms of the universe so that they are set to a predefined parameterization which can be altered by us only to a certain extent that we call the laws of physics? I've also thought in the past that a good way to look at a religious text is an attempt to understand the parameters of a good life. In the frame of simulation theory, you can look at religious text as historical simulated characters, read ancestors, attempts to parameterize the way to make the simulation a worthwhile experience before you're shut out of it. In fact, simulation theory may be a, a religious evolution in the same way that when religious texts were written, they were a way of understanding the parameters for a good life in the context of how they understood the world. I think it's the case that simulation theory is the start of a new religious understanding of the world that makes sense based on how we understand the world to work now. At the same time, the justifications and arguments laid out for simulation theory can likely be studied and applied to other mystical and religious understandings of the world. Regardless of all the scientific and rational ways you can look at this, there are certain leaps that need to be made to have a belief in this, which is why it's a belief and not a scientific type of knowing, which by the way, doesn't make it wrong, but it does put it in a category which is arguably more closely linked to a religion than it is to a science. So what then of our universe, who is bending the it's on the outside. We don't know, and I have no clue. What do we do with our current knowledge of the simulation theory? Again, we don't know. It's really another way to try and come to terms with this wacky, suffering guaranteed life. If we live in a simulation, I just hope I'm not an NPC. And if I am, well, I'm one who writes newsletters and creates YouTube videos. So I guess that's pretty cool. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more. If you want early access to the content, subscribe on Substack to read my pieces that come out ahead of time. These videos are derived from those pieces. They're completely free, so go ahead and, and subscribe and Substack. It'll be in the link in the description below. And until next time, everyone, take care of yourselves. Thank you for watching.